You're watching 63 Fix TV. Hope you enjoyed that little segment. It was really fun to edit that together. That was just the other day we went to the velodrome. More on that later. Now, before any of you go down to the comments section and be like, hey, you're supposed to have drop bars on a velodrome, hey, you're not supposed to have BMX pedals on a velodrome, and you need to make sure your cranks, crank arms are 165 and all this, and you're supposed to wear a helmet. <laughs> look, I know it was just a fun day out, and look, I love the velodrome. I love it. I knew what I was getting myself into. Remember that time when I did the two-hour personalized velodrome session with professionals? Now you're probably watching this video because you're thinking of buying State Bicycle's uh, Black Label V2, which is what we're going to review. Or you're thinking about buying another fixed gear bike or your first fixed gear bike. About a month ago, State Bicycle got in touch with myself uh, and offered to send a bike out to me and you know so I can review it and we can post it on the channel give you guys a bit more of an insight into what they offer so I chose the uh, black label v2 in army green now the reason why because I think that looks fucking cool I love the gumball tires on first appearance I loved the color um, I like that it was not stealthy you know but it was not too in your face um, if you do manage to look at their website, there are a few, like the pink bike there, and you've got the zombie green, which I was originally going to go for, but I just thought, nah. All right, so first things first, we get all the boring stuff out of the way, so all the specs and stuff like that, just so you know what is on this bike, or what makes up this bike, because there's certain things that I look for when I want to buy a new bike, like I want to know, you know, how the diameter of the seat tube, I want to know the clamp size on the stem, I want to know the biggest tyres I can get on it. Um, so we're going to go through that, the specs now, just so you know what we're dealing with. So, the frame is double butted, it's TIG welded. TIG welded, by the way, is it's just a, a method used by bike builders. It's a little bit, I believe it's cheaper and it also makes the bike lighter, but I'm not sure that it makes it stronger. It's made from 6061 aluminium, which as some of you might know, the leader 725 frame that I had um, is made from the same exact material. I just don't think it has the tapered head tube like this bike does. The forks are full carbon fiber from Essor in the USA. The wheel set, you can expect to see the black label mid profile wheels. It comes with a flip flop rear hub. Now, what that means is that on one side of the hub, you've got a fixed cog and it will come with a lock ring as well. And on the other side, it will either come um, with a free wheel or just the free wheel thread which is what this bike looks like my other bike has got a double fix hub so for example I could put a 13 tooth cog on one side and maybe a, a 15 tooth cog or whatever on the other side after that you've got the crank set which does look on the thin and cheap side it's CNC'd um, which means that a machine has cut that out and it's just another way for the manufacturing process to be cheaper and just so they can get more product for the price basically you put a sheet of metal in and it the machine cuts out the uh, in this case a crank uh, a chain ring sorry it also comes with a 48 tooth chain ring now bear that in mind because i know a lot of you prefer a certain gear ratio Remember, it's 48 tooth on the front, and it comes with a 16 tooth cog on the rear. It also comes with an FSA headset, which is a separate brand. Um, you'll see that on a lot of other bikes as well that come as a whole. So this is a really cool thing that I found on their website that I found out after I said to them, I want this one. <laughs> so basically, on the side of the website, you can fully customize your build. So you've got all the different things. You can choose the side. I went for the 55. 
Um, you can choose the handlebar. I went for the riser bar, and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. You can have uh, drop bars if you wanted to. Um, you can also choose a light set, so like you can have rechargeable um, LED lights, which is cool. You can also choose your pedals, which is a mistake that I made. I forgot to do this part. Um, so they sent me the standard pedals and the cages which come with it, which I just didn't even open. I just put my BMX pedals on this bike straight away. Just because I've used those types of pedals before. They're cheap, they're nasty, just are awful, awful pedals. So if you are gonna buy one of these, get your own pedals, whether you prefer cleats or whether you prefer the BMX type pedals or something else. Now, as you guys know, I'm a humongous fan of Hold Fast straps. And on this website, you can order your pedals with Hold Fast straps, which I think is a bonus. You can also, like I said earlier, if you wanted to have the option, you could add a free wheel and you have to pay an extra amount of money, but the option's there. And again, a nice little touch at the bottom that you can add a spare tube set. Going back to parts on the bike. Okay, so the stem is an oversized 31.8 millimeters. That's the clamp size. So the size of the, <laughs> you know when you put your, <laughs> Now, it does come with brakes, it comes with front and rear brakes, like I said in the unboxing video, which I'll put in the link in the description. In the unboxing video, it comes with brakes and uh, the whole point is, um, if you are buying a complete set, a complete bike, legally, the company have to sell you the front brake at least. Uh, in this case, they sent the front and the rear brake. It's just to cover their ass. Now, the seat post size is 27.2, which is amazing because I've had a lot of issues in the past. I know some of you have had a lot of seat post issues in the past with different sizes and buying the wrong size and, ah, it doesn't fit my bike and, oh, it's seized in the post and all of this shit. It's 27.2, brilliant. Love it, great. So the saddle is called the Premium Aerodynamic Race Saddle. I've seen this on so many other bikes, it's ridiculous. And I, I'm quite a wide set fellow, and just looking at the saddle scares the living piss out of me. Um, I just know for a fact that's not gonna be fun. Something you'll notice straight away, and something I noticed straight away when unboxing the bike, is that it weighs fuck all. It's literally the lightest bike I've ever picked up. The thing weighs eight kilograms, 0 0.02 by the way. That's if you go with the riser bars. And if you went with the drop bars, it's gonna be a little bit heavier. I believe it's, yeah, 8.11 kilograms, which is fucking light. It's really, really light. Some of the other nitty gritty things I know some of you bike nerds wanna know is the bottom bracket size. I can tell you now that it's 68 by 103 millimeters and it's a sealed cartridge so the chain that it comes with is a KMC chain which is a really what well, probably the best chain company out there everybody has either owned or does own a KMC chain the hubs come with 32 holes and the rims come with 32 as well the size of the tyres are 700 by 23, which is already on the small side of things, but nonetheless, it comes with tyres, it comes with tubes, it comes with the long Presta valve, so if you're going to buy extra inner tubes, you're going to need to get the long valve tubes. Um, the 23C, if you look, it's pretty close to where, you see the rear part of the, the bike there, where the, the rear brake would go? You can see that it doesn't give you that much clearance. It doesn't give you that much clearance on the front either, so with this bike, I'm afraid you're gonna have to stick with some skinny ass tires. I think the max you could probably do is maybe 32, maybe 32, 35, but then again, I'm not sure and I don't have that size tire out there and I have no intention of buying that size tire. I'm going to keep the 23 just because the gum wall tires, hello, 
gumball tires. Now on the frame, you can have a look on the down tube. There is the option to put a little bottle holder there or somewhere to put your U-lock. So like I said earlier, it comes with Vans grips from Colt Crew. Um, and I think the combination of the Vans grips with the gumwall tires is just so good. Um, the frame itself is glossy um, and the forks are like matte, uh, which um, straight away on the first ride, I put it in my car. It accidentally scratched the fork, but like a lot and visible as well. So that's the only downfall. The matte and gloss combo does look good with this bike, but because it's matte, it will scratch easier. Looks fantastic, but scratches easy. So yeah, the bike does look cool. It looks, you know, racy. It looks stealthy. It looks, uh, it looks like a racing bike, honestly. You would not look out of place if you took that to the velodrome, especially with some drop bars and some cleats and a helmet and a uh, those extra tight t-shirts. I think they're called bibs with the weird pockets at the back. Anyway, you wouldn't look out of place if, if you had one of those bikes and you looked like that. But if you go with a riser bar, then you've opened up this possibility that you're into fixed gear freestyle. And ladies and gentlemen, when you go fixed gear freestyle, there's no going back. You're in it. You are now classed as a hooligan. You are now classed as an ex-BMXer. That's a lot of X's. So, we took the bike out to the velodrome. I had a, f a fair few laps on this bad boy. And of course, I was on the riser bars. And when I did have the riser bar, because I'm used to having a higher rise, like maybe a three inch rise on the bars, whereas this is like not even one inch, I don't think. So it was like a flat bar. It felt like a flat bar. Because I went with that, it felt like I was very on top of the bar. Like I was very like top heavy. Do you know what I mean? Like I felt, I felt like uh, any wrong move and I'm going over the bars. Do you know what I mean? So I felt a little bit like, oh, fucking hell. Um, but going around the track was really fun. Like uh, brought back a lot of memories of that place because it had been about six or seven years since I went down there. Um, it felt just like the leader 725 and it was just, <laughs> it was just amazing. The good thing about this bike is that you do feel like you've got a lot of control when, when it comes to steering or manoeuvring, it does feel like you've got a lot of balance and control. Plus you look cool. So going back to the seat situation, when I took it out, got on it, I knew straight away, I'm going to be sore tomorrow. And I was right. I weigh, at the moment, 250 pounds of pure British beef. And that's a lot of weight for a bike so dainty. But I did feel safe. I did feel like, well, this is fine. I didn't feel like I was gonna get a puncture. I didn't feel like I was gonna bend the bars or anything like that. Uh, but the thing is, that seat is like wafer thin and rock solid. In my opinion, I'm used to dealing with like the charge bucket saddle, something comfy like those pivotal seats with a lot of sponge. I love that. I love it. What I'm saying is if you are a heavy set fellow like myself, I would change the seat straight away. When I sat on this bike, I felt like I was being tortured. Having set the bike up a couple of weeks ago, there's certain things that as when it arrives, there's certain things you need to take care of to make sure that you pump the tires up. You've got to tighten up that lock ring and the, the, use a chain whip to tighten up the rear cog. Some of you won't do that. Anybody out there likes fixed gear freestyle, this bike is impossible to bar spin just because of the geometry. The wheel swings round and hits the down tube. So there is absolutely no way of doing a bar spin on this. So yeah, things that I would change would be the seat, the pedals, the handlebar, 
and uh, I would also change the tires to something which has a little bit more tread because we went on the velodrome when it was like spitting with rain and the tires were just getting so slippery that I nearly went and I nearly slipped just because the tires were so slippery. I just recommend getting some tires that you know and that you've tested yourself especially if you're going to be riding brakeless, you're going to be skid stopping all over the place, you're going to be wanting something a little bit more durable if that's what you're going to use it for. Um, but if you're only going to ride the bike every like couple of weeks or so, you're going to ride it like once every two weeks or three weeks, whatever, that's fine. Keep the tyres on. I'm sure they'll do a real... Gumball tyres. Remember that. Steezy. So, my closing thoughts for this bike is it worth the £629? Possibly. Possibly is what I would say. Um, would I recommend it to you? Yes, of course. I would absolutely recommend it to you if you are perhaps a first time buyer of a fixed gear bike or whether you're willing to, if you're wanting to upgrade from the piece of shit that you bought at the beginning. We've all done it. We've all bought that shit bike because we weren't sure if we were going to like it. Found out that you did and you're like, hey, I want something else now. State Bicycle is probably one of the best places to go in terms of affordability. Another thing that I like is that you can choose all those add-ons at the end, which is a nice touch. And I don't know if anybody else is doing that at the moment. So yeah, I, I really enjoy riding this bike. I think it's great. I, I, I love being back on 700 wheels again. The bike is holding up really nicely now. I've been riding it for about three weeks and it is absolutely great. It's a dream, it's really smooth. There's no like bumpiness, like there's no, like you don't get a whole lot of vibration from like riding over like a bump or riding over gravel. There's no real, like normally with an aluminium frame, you, you feel every single thing. Whereas this is like, it's nice, it's a smooth ride, you know. Just want to say a massive thank you to State Bicycle for sending me this bike and uh, giving me the opportunity so that I can show my audience, you guys, you know, what I think and my thoughts on this bike. Um, I'm looking forward to doing a lot more reviews, a lot more how-to videos as well coming in the next few weeks. If you are interested in buying this bike, I will leave a link in the description below to State Bicycle's website. And if you already own a State Bicycle, make sure that you tag State Bicycle in Instagram because they will probably repost it and you can get your 15 minutes of fame. So if you have any questions at all about the State Bicycle Black Label V2 or anything in general, just leave a comment below. I promise to respond to everybody as long as you're not being a dick. And that concludes the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed watching this little review. I especially love the little montage before. It was really fun to do. I'm going to do more things like that in future. If you are new to this channel, my name is Dan. I do a lot of fixed gear reviews, uh, how-to video guides, unboxing videos, and just general fixed gear shenanigans. Press subscribe if you are new. Hit the notification bell so that you get notified when I bring out a new video. A lot of you are missing my videos lately, so just know that you need to click the notification bell to be notified. Again, make sure you leave a comment below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. That'd be fucking great. And I will see you in the next video.